fourth session of the laws of Shabbat from Shulchan Aruch. We are now looking at chapter 247, where the two and the Shulchan Aruch speak about sending mail or uh, packages before Shabbat with a non-Jew, with the concern of, uh, the concern is that if we ask the non-Jew to deliver this package before Shabbat, he must travel on Shabbat to deliver it to its destination. Um, there are discussion in Halakha, but all uh, all the details are not relevant to today's situation when we have uh, global systems that uh, move mail and packages from place to place. So there will be no problem to order something before Shabbat or to leave um, a package or uh, or uh, mail for pickup on Shabbat because it is part of the general global system. Similarly, there's no problem in bringing mail or packages that were delivered on Shabbat, left at, at your uh, doorstep from Amazon or anything else, to put it into, um, to bring it into the house. The um, the question whether to open it or not, it's up to, um, it's up to each and every one. The uh, one could uh, avoid opening uh, any mail that uh, might affect the spirit of Shabbat. Definitely I would say do not open bills or letters from the IRS. On Shabbat, but if you got a letter from uh, a relative from out of town, very uncommon today to have a written letter, uh, or something that you were expecting, or a magazine, etc., this is something that you could open. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, the issue of uh, tearing paper or envelopes again later, but basically there's no problem with that. It's uh, under the category of kolam ekalkelin p'turim. It's not done in a, in a way that preserves the paper or make it makes it usable for future use, but rather uh, in a manner of destruction. Therefore, there's no problem in opening an envelope on Shabbat. But again, this is your personal decision if you want to do it or you feel that this takes away from the spirit of Shabbat. This is chapter 247 in Shohana. We we'll go to chapter 248. The tool says, One should not board a ship uh, within three days of Shabbat because uh, of Onik Shabbat. This is uh, the common explanation that uh, for the first three days, one still feels na- nauseated by the, uh, uh, you know, is seasick, and only after that he gets used to it, so he should not board the ship uh, earlier than that. However, already the uh, the two of the Shohan Aruch say, based on the, on the Gemara, that uh, this is only if one goes for leisure, but if there is a specific reason, that he has to go for the Tavara Mitzvah, he's allowed to do that. Today we understand that leisure travel is also a mitzvah because it contributes to the uh, general well being, uh, mental, emotional uh, well being of a person. So, therefore, traveling uh, on Shabbat when you board it before Shabbat is not a problem as long as you know that you're not going to suffer on Shabbat in a way that is going to take away from Onik Shabbat, from the joy of Shabbat. So, um, or if it's necessary for commerce, which we, most people don't do today, unless they're really afraid of being on an airplane, so they will take a ship, but very rare. <clears throat> the um, um, cruise ships and uh, other leisurely travel, therefore, if one boards, even if he boards a day before Shabbat, it is okay, the, the ships are much bigger, the feeling at sea is different, and that uh, question of whether there is going to be honoring Shabbat or not should be left to the individual. There's an interesting question of uh, boarding a plane before Shabbat and landing after Shabbat, which is possible if one is traveling from the Americas to the uh, towards the Far East, so one could take off before sun before sunset on Friday and land after sunset on Mosei Shabbat, so he will be the whole Shabbat on the plane. That question has been discussed. Uh, there are different opinions, but there is a possibility to do that. Uh, if one uh, needs to do it, either for a mitzvah or for, for business, and he knows that uh, being on the plane on Shabbat will not take away from his onik Shabbat. And as I explained earlier in uh, the halachot of Amir Aligov asking an Anju to do something for you, one could ask on the plane uh, the staff to do anything 
for him during Shabbat. Um, another question that has um, has to do with that is Isul uh, Tehumin, getting getting uh, out of the ship when if the ship if the ship docks on Shabbat uh, on Shabbat. What do you do with Tehumin? Tehumin is that uh, concept that one has uh, Alpaim Ama, which is about um, um, a thousand uh, feet out of, uh, sorry, I would say a thousand meters, uh, about uh, three thousand feet uh, out of his uh, out of the boundaries of the city. So, in big cities like New York, so Tehumin would start if you walk from the center of the city to the to the last house. So sometimes you could walk for days and not get uh, out of the Humain. In smaller cities, <coughs> one has the uh, uh, potentially has the possibility of being out of the Tehum. So uh, with a ship or a plane that landed uh, on Shabbat, that that would be a problem. So I know of cases of people who boarded the plane before Shabbat. They were supposed to land on time. There were delays. And ideally, one should not take a flight that lands. Uh, minutes or hours before Shabbat because of potential delays. But if that happens and uh, the the uh, the plane landed on Shabbat, what do you do? Are you going to be trapped in the uh, in the airport the whole Shabbat? Or if the ship docks on Shabbat and let's say you're in a cruise, are going to be trapped on the ship or at the port the whole Shabbat? The answer is that we could rely on the opinion that says that the um, the Humim do not apply at sea or in the air, and the ship and the plane are their own property. When the Mishnah speaks about someone who was taken out of his um, domain on Shabbat and placed somewhere else, for example, uh, there are two examples that are either one was blown away by a storm, which is not very common, and most probably when he lands, he would not be in the shape of getting up and walking, or someone who was uh, kidnapped, by robbers or by uh, by enemy soldiers, picked up from one location on Shabbat, dropped off in a very very uh, remote location that is way beyond the Tehumin. So they say the Mishnah says the amot lekol ruach. He could only walk uh, four amot lekol ruach, about uh, two meters six feet. Or um, there are certain situations where we would have alpaimama, but not more than that. But because the ship is a property by itself, and the same with the plane, and they travel by sea or air, when one lands, this that's where the Shabbat home starts, so one could travel freely within uh, within these uh, uh, areas, by foot, or if there is, again, if one uh, needs to travel, now, what do you do on Shabbat? We'll talk about it later on when we talk about transportation. But uh, one could either do it by foot or by bicycle, or if there is a, uh, a shuttle or a service uh, for the passengers of the train, it could do that. Uh, stuck at the airport, better than being stuck in the airport the whole Shabbat, sometimes separate from the family, um, it is better to arrange for a, a service to be picked up. And we will talk about it more when we get to the issue of transportation on Shabbat, um, ideally one could arrange it from before Shabbat. If not, there are ways uh, to do it um, on Shabbat through the concept of Amir Goy of asking a non-Jew to do it for you and using a more than one uh, rabbinical concept, meaning if we involve two rabbinical prohibitions, and we say indirectly to a non that could be done on Shabbat. So, for example, one can ask someone uh, to order uh, an Uber using his uh, using his phone. The phone, carrying the phone is a muktzeh. Keep your packages with you. Didn't get home in time. That'd be much better. Uh, a different feeling for everyone involved, for the family, for yourself. Um, also, all the worries about being away from home on Shabbat, but if you feel that this uh, is not for you and you want to spend the whole Shabbat at the hotel, at the airport, or at the terminal, it's your choice. But there are ways uh, to bypass that. I recall a story that uh, I read years ago in a in a in an uh, Haredi magazine, I think from Lakewood, about a miracle 
uh, of um, a school a school trip that got stuck in the snow, and the rabbi took the, the the kids off the bus just before Shabbat, and they walked for three hours, and miraculously they found a place where they could we could have stayed the whole Shabbat. So this is not a miracle. This is utter uh, stupidity. I'm sorry for for the word because they should have uh, should not have disembarked from the bus, kept on traveling, not put themselves in danger, should not have traveled in the first place if they were paying attention to the forecast and knowing that there could be a snowstorm. But if it took them by surprise, they should have kept driving until they reach a, a safe place, even if the driver is Jewish. Because this is a question of pikuah um, nefesh. Even more so, if, they, if the driver is not Jewish, there's no problem. If you are already on the bus, um, I know of situation of people taking the bus, for example, from the city, from New York City to New Jersey uh, in the winter, and uh, uh, getting stuck in traffic and snow. In that case, they should have been. They should continue with the bus and being dropped each one uh, at home with their with their uh, with their stuff. Not as someone suggested to uh, leave everything in the bus in the parking lot and walk home in uh, in bad weather. So uh, this is regarding. The traveling before Shabbat, of course, one has to be planned in advance to not be stuck in such a situation. But if that happened, one must know that you have to weigh all the uh, all the uh, the elements of Onik Shabbat of how you're going to spend your Shabbat, the the concern of the family, your concern whether you're in a in a in a safe place or not. Another example is you're driving, if one is driving before Shabbat and gets into a very dangerous neighborhood. And he has to traverse that neighborhood in order to get uh, to where he is. The, not to not take the risk. Of course, again, plan in advance. But if that happened, you should keep on driving until you get to a safe place where you could abandon the car, hail a taxi, and maybe uh, get home. Again, do it in a way that you say you tell the driver, open this, take the money, or something like that. Um, I would always have in mind. Not to put yourself in uh, in danger, uh, even if it's potential danger for Shabbat. If it's pikuach um, nefesh, if it's sorry, if it's a, a prohibition, a biblical prohibition, then of course you do not uh, transgress it unless it's pikuach nefesh and clear and uh, uh, immediate danger. But pikuach nefesh also includes. The the potential danger. So, for example, for like I said, this uh, being in a dangerous neighborhood, right now when you stop the car and you you start walking, you're not in danger, but in five minutes or an hour, you will be in danger. So that is not uh, something to be done. The um, uh, and the, there also one could rely on, uh, and I'm saying that because I know people were were actually stuck in situations like that. One could rely on the opinion that the the time of Rabbi Tam, who says that uh, Shabbat ends later, applies both at the beginning and the end of Shabbat. So this is only for a rare situation where uh, one is driving and got stuck before Shabbat in in a in a dangerous area, should continue driving uh, and pass that area, relying on Rabbi Tam that uh, actually puts the, the beginning of Shabbat with total darkness. The, um, there are different opinions regarding that, but uh, when there is danger, one could rely on it. So, to summarize all that, plan in advance, pay attention to the forecast, pay attention to the, uh, pay attention to the uh, uh, to traffic reports, to anything else that can happen, know exactly how you're traveling, um, if you see an hour before Shabbat that you're not going to make it, maybe it's better to to pull off and uh, and stay in a hotel, notify the family. Um, so all these things should be taken into consideration. But if you got stuck, don't put yourself in danger. Uh, preserving life is more important than uh, anything else. Have a great day.